part four of using Mathematica for ordinary differential equations. In this part, we're going to consider a more complicated kind of autonomous differential equation than we did in the last video. In the last video, we could actually guess the solution as well, as long as we thought about the differential equation in the right way. In this video, you really won't be able to guess the solution. There will be complications that can arise when we try to solve the differential equation, either by hand or with Mathematica. We'll talk about those. We'll review the use of D-solve, which is Mathematica's symbolic differential equation solver. Vector plot makes what we call slope fields. Show and plot can be used to take the slope field and paste the graph of the solution on top of it and see that it follows the slope field. We'll also make use of Mathematica commands simplify, solve, and apart in this video. I'm going to go through a lot of important content pretty fast here. You're going to want to pay very careful attention, take notes, pause the video, and rewatch parts if you need to. It's going to go by pretty fast. All right, here we go. Here's the example. You can look, pause the video right now and look this over. I'm going to go ahead and move on down to part A, the solution part A. We want to find the general solution of this differential equation, dy dt equals 1 fourth y times the quantity 3 minus y. This is what we call an autonomous equation. What does that mean? It means when you have a differential equation of this form that the right-hand side is independent of t. You know, autonomous basically is synonymous with independent. In this kind of situation, it means the right-hand side is independent of t. The slope field is going to be constant along horizontal lines. t is going to be the horizontal axis, y is going to be the vertical axis. When y is constant, that's going to be a horizontal line. The slope marks in the slope field are going to be constant along those lines for an autonomous equation. And solutions will be horizontal translations of each other. D-solve again is the differential equation solver. There's the syntax, the basic syntax. Capital letters are important there. It is a function, so we need square brackets for the input. The first um, input, the first argument of D-solve is going to be the differential equation itself. Use a y prime of t for dy dt. Equals equals, whenever you use d-solve or solve or any kind of equation solver in Mathematica, do you type the differential equation as 1 fourth y times 3 minus y? Well, unfortunately, maybe, no you don't actually. You need to emphasize to Mathematica that y is a function of t, so even though you don't see any t's on the right-hand side of this equation, you do need to put t's in here, y of t, like this when you use Mathematica, when you use d-solve. It is still an autonomous equation, however. Then you put a comma, and the second input re-emphasizes that y is the function that you're trying to solve for, is a function of t, then you put a comma and put t, once again to emphasize that t is the independent variable. A little strange, but that's how it goes. Enter this with shift return. What do we get? We get this function right here. All right, Mathematica is proposing this as the general solution. What does that mean? It means, first of all, that it is a solution no matter what c1 is. In other words, when you substitute this function into the differential equation on both the left-hand side and the right-hand side, that you get the same thing as functions of t when simplified. In other words, the derivative of this function as a function of t equals the right-hand side of this differential equation when Again, when you substitute the function in place of y, meaning everything ultimately depends on t. When you simplify these things, do you get the same thing? Another thing it means is it should allow you to solve any initial value problem. The initial value problem we're going to solve is this one. y of 0 will be 2. The graph of the solution is going to go through the point t, comma y equals 0, comma 2. Um, however, if I had a negative number here instead of a positive number, you should look at this with suspicion. There'd be no value of c that you could choose that would solve that initial value problem because e to a power here is never negative. It's not negative up here or here either, and we're adding down here. Um, e to a power is never zero either. This should be looked at with suspicion. So I propose that this is not the most ideal general solution, and I will define a function that will be a more ideal general solution, though still not quite ideal. I'm going to replace this e to the 3 c1 with just a plain c. It's actually better to use a lowercase c here because uh, Mathematica reserves the capital c for its, ar its arbitrary constants. I'm going to propose this is better where c here can be negative or zero. It's still actually not going to be quite ideal, but I propose it's better. I'm going to go ahead and enter this function into Mathematica's memory. Is it entered? I can type y of t and see that it's entered. Can it solve any initial value problem? Well, again, let's check, first of all, 
that it solves the differential equation no matter what c is. Is the left hand side y prime of t always equal to the right hand side 1 fourth y of t times 3 minus y of t when I substitute y of t in place of y? y prime of t, that looks kind of complicated. Let's see what this equals. Oh, they look different. That can happen. Let's try seeing if simplify makes them look the same. So I'm going to use the simplify function, built in Mathematica function here. y prime is going to be its input here. That will simplify y prime to that. Let me also make it, use it down here. Make this expression the input for the simplify function. And lo and behold, they do simplify to the same thing. So you should realize that's the case, that sometimes the expressions will not look the same, but when you simplify them, you should be able to make them look the same. Simplify may not always work in that situation, but hopefully it will. By the way, a couple other issues here. Well, another issue is, you see this is a fancy e. That does represent the number e. You cannot replace a fancy e with just a plain e. That won't work. You can replace it with a capital E. Capital E is the quickest way to type the number e in Mathematica. Or you can go back to a fancy e. A fancy e can be obtained either by copying and pasting or doing escape two e's and then escape again. That makes a fancy e. What else? Can we solve any initial value problem? I'm going to use the solve command now. And that solves algebra equations. What would it mean to, a, to be able to solve any initial value problem? It means you'd be able to solve for a particular value of the constant c to make any initial value problem satisfied. Your arbitrary initial value problem would be y of an arbitrary time t0 equals an arbitrary output y0. There is an arbitrary initial value problem. Can we find a particular value of c so that this equation is satisfied no matter what t0 and y0 are? Let's see what this produces. It produces this, which is good, I guess. However, there's a problem here, too. Here's another complication that comes up. Um, evidently, this wouldn't work if y0 is 0. If the initial output of the function at time t equals t0 is 0, evidently, it's not going to work. So that is illustrating that it's not the most ideal general solution. If you try to solve this equation where y0 zero is 0, we get the empty set as the solution set. So it's not going to be the most ideal general solution, but it'll be good enough to solve this initial value problem up here, and I'll continue with it down further. I want to show you that you can check the answer by hand. Here's a situation where you're going to want to pause the video and look this over. We are taking this function and plugging it to the left-hand side and right-hand side. We need the quotient rule and the chain rule and some algebra to simplify these things to see that we get the exact same expressions. I'm also going to show you that you can solve the equation by hand with something called separation of variables. You may or may not know what separation of variables is. Um, if you don't, maybe you want to find out before you look this over. You get the y's on one side and the t's on the other side, and you integrate both sides, and you try to solve for y as a function of t using various algebra tricks. Um, some of these tricks might seem a little dubious and a little confusing because I have these different constants, a c1 and a c2 and a c3, that are all uh, in there, and I'm writing the solution evidently in a couple different forms. Actually, this is the most ideal form for the general solution because that can solve any initial value problem. I also needed the technique of partial fractions to do the integral on the left here, um, to write it as this integral. A part is the other command I wanted to show you that can help you do partial fractions. If we type the fraction 1 over y times 3 minus y into a part to help us integrate this function, 1 over y times 3 minus y, that will separate this into partial fractions, and so you see where the one-thirds come from that are here and here. Anyway, again, pause this, the video, look this over, make sure you understand it, or study separation of variables if you don't know about that. Can d solve be used to solve initial value problems? Yes, it can. We've seen that before. I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste the d solve code down here to solve this initial value problem to find the unique solution, just a one function that satisfies both of those things. You need to put the differential equation in a list with curvy braces. 
along with the initial condition, y of 0 equals 2, use double equal signs there, um, something's going to happen bad that a complication is going to occur if I try to enter this. Watch, I will get an error. Mathematica made a little noise, said this can't be used as a function. The reason I got an error is because I haven't cleared y. y is in Mathematica's memory as a function of t back from up here. So it's always a good practice to clear your variables ahead of time. We can clear y with this code right here, clear y before using dsolve. Semicolons just suppress output, however, I'm using it also something that, to separate these different um, lines of code. Now dsolve works, it produces this as your answer. Uh, is that the same answer as what we got before? Well, okay, we, had, we didn't solve the initial value problem before. Here's how you can solve the initial value problem with algebra. And I'm doing it in three different ways, using three different forms of the general solution, um, giving you different values, conceivably, for the constant. Any way you do it, you do get the same thing that Mathematica got here, 6e to the 3t over 4, divided by 1 plus 2 times e to the 3t over 4, which can be written in different ways, like this right here. Okay, so pause the video and look this over. Finally, we go down to the slope field and plotting the solution on top of the slope field. If you don't understand the code that you see here, you're going to go, want to go back to um, the other videos and look this over uh, to try to understand what's going on here. I'm just going to go ahead and enter it to see that the solution curve, this blue curve, is following the slope field. These little slope marks are mini tangent lines to solution curves, including this dark blue solution curve that we see there. I did notice that something happened here. I just recently downloaded the newest version of Mathematica and in this newest version with vector style right here it did not make my little slope marks thick and red like I wanted it to however if I put these in double curly braces then it ended up working and now those little slope marks are going to be thick and red okay so that was evidently a change from the previous version of Mathematica so again here's the slope field uh, you do see it's constant along horizontal lines because it's an autonomous differential equation, and there's your solution that we found for the initial value problem. You can see it also goes to the point y of 0 equals 2, the point 0, 2. And I'll end the video there.